the road to 250 gold stars. To tackle every ghost on every track is a feat which requires an immense amount of skill, determination and perseverance, and though some ghosts may be laughable, others will laugh as you pour countless hours into them. Over the course of the past 6 months, I set out to conquer all 250 expert staff ghosts in CTGP and I certainly learned a lot on the way. In this video, I will be sharing with you what are in my opinion the top 50 hardest ghosts of all. Before I begin, I'd like to mention a few ghosts that may seem missing from the list and justify why they didn't crack my top 50. Festival Town I'm not sure where the idea came from that this staff ghost is really fast. It does a lot of things wrong for some easy time gain and the track is pretty easy to pick up. Unnamed Valley The lows are pretty hard, but once you get a rhythm going, it's not too hard to get a run within the flow to suffice. Sky High Island Another ghost which is overrated in difficulty in my opinion, and Spear makes it much easier too. And Mushroom Peaks. As someone who is pretty consistent with the cut, the hardest part about this ghost is not making any stupid mistakes for 3.5 minutes. I will also be leaving a disclaimer in the description of the video which I highly recommend you give a read, but with that out of the way, let's begin this marathon of a ranking. Kicking off the list at number 50, we have Summer Starville. The staff ghost is a 137.948 by Ivan, which is 3 seconds off the BKT. Despite using Luigi Mac, this ghost is pretty fast and handles the chaos of the track very well. Meeting it requires you to get good lows at the start and fast shortcuts which can be a little tough to learn. The ghost does however trick off the cut all 3 laps, which is in some time, and you get a speed advantage by using Monkey Kong. At number 49 we have Big Express City. The staff ghost is a 212.448 by Russo X, which is 5 seconds off the BKT. Russo drives this ghost very well for most of the run, and even manages to beat out the train without using any shrooms. The hardest part of this track is definitely doing the shroomless cut fast, as it can give you random sticks and doing it well is essential to beating out the train. Once you make it past that pace lock however, this ghost isn't too bad, and Russo even has a poor section before the big shroom cut where you can gain some time. At number 48 we have Lost Fortress. The staff ghost is a 247.806 by Russo X, which is 4.5 seconds off the BKT. This track is pretty simple and easy to learn except one small thing, the double rail strap. Russo drives pretty well and gets 5 for 6 rails on this run, and outspeeding him isn't too difficult, but learning and executing both rails consistently is. Once learned however, this ghost isn't that bad, and the fact that Russo misses the first rail lap 3 gives you a significant advantage. At number 47 we have Underground Sky. The staff ghost is a 156.547 by Emil, which is 6.2 seconds of the BKT. To quote James05, Underground Sky is slept on for being the most vile shit in the game, and I probably agree. There are so many annoying strats in this one such as the mini turn skip, the cannon stick, and the tight shroom cut, coupled with the best CT cart ghost in the game and you've got quite a challenge. That being said though, the ghost is indeed on a cart, so you gain time almost everywhere simply by using flame. At number 46 we have Flying Kingdom. The staff ghost is a 225.493 by Emil, which is 5.9 seconds of the BKT. The difficulty of this ghost comes down to one thing, the shroomless cut. If you are consistent with it, then it will be a breeze, but if not, then you may have a hard time with this one. Using Mark makes the shroomless a lot easier, but also means you have to drive faster, though it's nothing insane. Using Flame makes the shroomless a lot harder, but leaves a lot of room for error. A great example of this being this video. At number 45, we have Water Village. The staff ghost is a 158.859 by Kiwi, which is 3 seconds of the BKT. This track may look simple, but is actually full of many difficulties and inconsistencies. The bridge has given you wheelie locks, the turn in the cave is hard to take tight, the shroom must require precise hop timing, and it's surprisingly easy to hit the wall in the shroom cut. However, after wrestling with the track for a while, beating the ghost shouldn't be too hard as it does lose significant time on the shroomless and shroom cut all three laps. At number 44 we have Desert Fort. The staff ghost is a 253.433 by Joris, which is 5.9 seconds for the BKT. Many will think that I am severely underrating this ghost, however, this ghost is all about making the cut 3 times, which I had surprisingly little trouble with. Despite this, the shroom cut here is very difficult, and it requires two very good TF inputs coupled with a nice alignment. Aside from the cut though, the track is quite easy to pick up, and the ghost isn't too fast. The only other thing that can potentially be problematic is the ending strap, which isn't too hard to learn. At number 43 we have Rock Rock Ridge. The staff goes to the 209.240 by Cobalt, which is 2.4 seconds for the BKT. This ghost driving is very good, shown by the fact this ghost is only 2 seconds off the BKT. Not only that, but it also uses Funky, so you don't get any speed advantage. So why is this ghost not higher up on the list? The Ultra Room Strap. Thankfully, 
This track has a two shroom cut, which can be used to have a much easier time beating the ghost. The track is also quite simple to learn, so keeping up with Colbo isn't too hard. At number 42, we have Warp Pipe Island. The staff goes to 157.142 by Cobalt, which is 3.7 seconds for the BKT. This track is quite annoying to play, especially the pipe section with the boost panels and the inconsistent water spout trick. Cobalt drives this track very well and makes no noticeable errors, but despite being a spare track, I would highly recommend using Flame for this one for consistency. This track is already bouncy enough without adding spear physics to it. At number 41, we have Fishdom Island. The staff goes to 2 minute point 144 by Jasper, which is 2.2 seconds off the BKT. As weird as it may seem, Jasper doesn't use the optimal combo for this ghost. This is somehow a flame track. Overall, the track is pretty simple and requires virtually no learning, so most of the focus is on outspeeding Jasper, which isn't easy by any means. Using flame will allow you to take much tighter turns and help prevent bounces, but you may lose a lot of time on straights unless you're a chain leader god. Using Spear will prevent time loss on straights, but will bring it to simply outlining Jasper. At number 40 we have Jungle Glade. The staff goes into 208.576 by Melg, which is 2.8 seconds off the BKT. Yet another ghost where you can choose between using Flame or Spear. Personally, I use Flame for this one, which is probably why it's in my top 50, as I believe this one is much easier with Spear. But from my experience, this ghost is difficult to break away from, with the only place you can gain any significant time being the beach section not to mention the low at the start being problematic. However, this track is quite self-explanatory and simple, meaning that keeping up with the ghost isn't too difficult. At number 39 we have Bowser's Fiery Fortress. The staff goes to 219.181 by Leaksy, which is 3.5 seconds of the PKT. This track is very challenging and full of difficult strats, such as the barrel and last turn, and even completing a run here can be very tough. However, the ghost does do a lot of small things wrong, only charging 1MT around the first turn, tricking off the barrel all 3 laps, and tricking off the last ramp lap 3. These all add up to a lot of significant time loss, so once you manage to set a run here, being fast enough for the gold star shouldn't be too bad. At number 38 we have Desert Mushroom Ruins. The staff goes to 207.822 by Cobalt, which is 3.2 seconds off the BKT. This track has quite a learning curve to it, and when paired with a ghost at the speed, this gold star can seem quite naunting. However, after learning how to deal with wheelie locks and the alt stream spot, keeping up with this ghost is very manageable, and dare I say the track is even quite fun to play? At number 37 we have Suzuka Circuit. The staff ghost is a 258.101, which is 3.1 seconds off the BKT. This ghost will throw most players into unfamiliar territory, as the easiest way to beat it is with Sneakster. There isn't any tech in this track, however the track doesn't seem to flow very well, so getting into driving it can be quite weird. Adding on top of that is the speed mod and the length of the track. The ghost does lose time however by using the spear shroom spot though, so a lot of time can be gained just by using optimal shroom spots. At number 36 we have Siberian Chateau. The staff goes to 227.420 by Jasper, which is 5.7 seconds of the big AT. For the most part, this track drives very nicely and has a good rhythm to it. However, the bridge tricks are of course the main issue here. The ghost gets 6 lows across the entire room, which can be very very difficult to do, especially under pressure. Many will resort to only doing 1 per lap, causing you to have to drive a lot faster. Although, thankfully, the ghost isn't all that fast. Doing the shroom cut optimally can also be tough, but a bad shroom cut is minimal time loss. At number 35 we have Lava Road. The staff goes as a 234.804 by Countess, which is 4.5 seconds off the BKT. Similar to Siberian, this track is very smooth to drive with the exception of one thing. The one thing here being the stream cut. While the drift method is slower, it is much, much easier, and the method I personally use. However, the spin drift method, which by the way is impossible, will gain a decent amount of time on the Ghost, which drives very well throughout the entire run. At number 34 we have Wild Ridges Motocross. The staff Ghost is a 159.066 by Solius, which is 3.5 seconds off the BKT. This track is super inconsistent, which makes this ghost quite tough to beat. Everything from the first turn is full of bounces, slip drifts, awkward turns and obstacles, which makes achieving any kind of consistency on this track near impossible. This one took me 7 hours to beat, after having paces only 15 minutes into attempts. The main time gain here is the ending section, as the staff goes poorly all 3 laps, and even has a major wheelie turn at the end of lap 2. At number 33 we have Tropical Factory. The staff goes to 302.054 by Emil, which is 8.8 .8 seconds off the BKT. Being almost 9 seconds off the BKT, it's easy to underestimate this ghost, however the track is really what makes this ghost hard. 
In my opinion, the best way to beat this ghost is by doing the gap cut twice. This makes it so you don't even have to do the fountain cut. However, the gap cut is easily one of the hardest shortcuts in CTGP, and making it twice in a run is very challenging. Not to mention you have to fight the slips, inconsistent tricks, and other difficulties this track has to offer. The ghost won't be hard for those who put a gap, but I personally had quite a bit of trouble with it. At number 32, we have Pinewood Path. The staff goes to the 204.903 by VROCK, which is 3 seconds off the BKT. Many will think that I'm severely overrating this ghost, and to be honest, I probably am. The difference, however, is that for some reason I opted to beat on a flame, opposed to the more optimal Magic Cruiser. All the turns on this track feel very awkward, and one wide turn can lose lots of time. VROCK also drives very well and only really loses time due to not getting the most optimal shroom cuts. Beating this ghost actually left me with the most hand pain I have ever experienced playing this game, and a blister which is still yet to go away. At number 31 we have SNES Bowser Castle 2. The staff goes to the 240.306 by Jasper, which is 3.5 seconds off the big AT. This trick is quite simplistic and easy to pick up. Everything aside from the low tricks is very basic and requires little practice. However, the staff ghost is very fast. Not only does he take every turn very tight and get all the low tricks, but he also gets three full chains in this run, making this ghost very frustrating to beat for many. Personally, I did cheese this one due to getting six full chains and one half chain in my run, so there is a good chance that I am underrating this ghost. At number 30, we have New Moon Manor. The staff ghost is a 254.836 by Dacia, which is 5.4 seconds off the BKT. This track is long, strat heavy, and inconsistent. Specifically, the ramps on this track just do not seem to function half of the time. Dacia drives very fast here and makes essentially no major errors, only somewhat unoptimal shroom cuts. Dacia also does lose a lot of time due to using King Boo, so you get a significant advantage just by using Funky. That being said, finishing a consistent run on a track like this is no easy task. At number 29, we have Undiscovered Off Limit. The staff goes to 154.393 by Emil, which is 2.2 seconds off the BKT. This track has a lot going on. Chain Chomps on Weed, Coopers on Meth, the entire track is essentially one big acid trip. The Ghost drives very well on this track too, as proven by only being 2 seconds off the BKT. However, Flame does gain a lot of time in the blue section due to the Spears Poor Drift, and you can also gain some time on the turn skip. At number 28, we have Twin Peaks. The staff goes to 302.369 by Russo X, which is 4 seconds off the BKT. This is a very difficult track. Everything from the train, to the water section, to the house section is easy to fail, and the staff goes to a lot of this very well. He takes every turn well, and is mostly unaffected by some of the bad jam on this track. That being said, he does lose some time by tricking up around lap 1 and 3, and he misses the trick at the start of lap 2. Despite this, setting a consistent run on this track for yourself can take quite some time. At number 27 we have Woohoo Mountain. The staff goes to the 127.130 by Troy, which is 2.3 seconds off the BKT. This track feels like complete RNG to play. The first 15 seconds of this track is home to some of the absolute worst gameplay in the game. Not only is the low trick impossible to time, but the car in the way, along with the recovery and so many runs instantaneously. The cave is also home to some annoying lows, and the ramp after the stream cut is inconsistent. All of these factors take a moderately fast ghost into absolute pain, but if you manage to win the RNG battle, then you shouldn't have too much trouble beating this ghost. At number 26, we have Glimmer Express Trains. The staff ghost is 304.213 by Countess, which is 8.1 seconds off the BKT. This track is similar to Woohoo with the abusive tech, but is more consistent and has more room for error. That being said, the track is a lot longer, and maintaining a good level of consistency on the track like this for that long is not easy to do. Countess deals with the tech pretty well here, and does just enough advanced strats to provide a good challenge, but nothing too absurd to the point it's absolutely insane. At number 25, we have Static Twinkle Circuit. The staff goes to the 311.477 by Zuzu, which is 2.8 seconds off the BKT. While personally I had little trouble on this ghost, I must give it credit based on the experience of most others. This track has many inconsistent tricks which can lose a good amount of time if you miss them. It can also be quite bumpy at times, which can make it difficult to squeeze out MTs. However, the lines are very self-explanatory and require virtually no learning, so it isn't too hard to have good paces after a short amount of time. At number 24, we have Desert Castle Raceway. The staff goes to the 3 minute .016 by Pascal, which is 3.7 seconds off the BKT. This track feels pretty good to drive and has no real inconsistencies. As for Pascal, he drives very fast and it's very hard to gain time on him just by driving. 
However, the ghost doesn't do the low trigger at the end of both laps, which probably loses him about 0.6 in total. So once you're able to keep up on the rest of the track, you should be able to break ahead with that low trick. At number 23, we have Volcanic Valley. The staff ghost is a 226.154 by Pascal, which is 2.4 seconds off the BKT. This track can be summarised in one word, rails. Beating this ghost is all about making all of the rails and completing the run. Pascal drives very well but loses some time due to not doing the wheelie strat towards the end, and using the wrong stream spot. But like I say, once you learn how to make these rails consistently, which by the way, it's just one of the most infuriating things to do ever, then you should have no problem beating this one. At number 22 we have Marble Towers. The staff goes to 250.288 by Russo X, which is 7.3 seconds off the BKT. This track is difficult, inconsistent, and very strat heavy. Things such as the mounds after the cannon and the spiral can be frustrating to do well 3 for 3, along with everything else in this track. The ghost itself isn't that great, having an especially bad lap 1, but it's still hard due to the difficulty of the track. It's probably the best example of beating the track and not the ghost. At number 21 we have Ice Peak Mountain. The staff ghost is a 137.116 by Zack, which is 4.1 seconds off the BKT. This track is played in 4 movements, the bridge turn, the shroomless, the rooftop, and the shroom. The shroom specifically is so annoying to do. Having to hit the boost panel afterwards along with having a decent alignment into the next lap is very difficult and cost me almost all of my runs. The ghost here is decent but doesn't do the shroomless lap 2 and has a weak shroom lap 3. With that being said though, the rage inducing nature of the track makes this ghost a hard one to beat. At number 20 we have Final Grounds. The staff ghost is a 253.298 by Mega which is 3.4 seconds off the BKT. This track really does feel like the final grounds of MK Week. Plenty of difficult turns, tricky strats, and a tough stream must to top it all off. The ghost drives pretty well too, and is almost quite hard to judge. Personally, I've had a lot of exposure to this track, and was already very familiar with how to do most of the tech, so I may be underrating this one. In any case, it's a tough ghost which will give most new players especially a very hard time. At number 19, we have Garden of Dreams. The staff ghost is a 230.048 by GU, which is 2.7 seconds off the BKT. This is the most beautiful track in C2GP, and although that has nothing to do with anything, I thought it was worth mentioning. This track has a million little micro bounces, which can make it very difficult to get drifts and wheelies out, along with being able to squeeze out main turbos, all of which are essential in beating this ghost, which is very, very fast. I found this ghost very difficult to break away from, and one small mistake can cost you your entire run. At number 18 we have GBA Bowser Castle 3. The staff ghost is a 206.306 by Bean, which is 9 seconds off the BKT. This is where the CT main in me really shows, because I found this ghost way, way harder than it is the general consensus. As someone with very little experience with doing the shortcut fast, this one took me quite a while to beat. The ghost itself drives very poorly, but has a fast cut all 3 laps and gets all but 2 lows. Doing both of these things provided to be a very difficult task for me, as I would get lots of runs to lap 3 and either fail the cut or be too slow due to not getting enough of the lows. Our team mains won't find this ghost that tough, but I certainly did. At number 17 we have Rosalina's Snow World. The staff ghost is a 208.912 by Gnome, which is 7.1 seconds off the BKT. This is perhaps the worst functioning track in all of CTGP. The zippers are inconsistent, the ice road is annoying, and that last ramp can shoot you in a million word directions. The main bulk of this track comes from the zippers, which have a major learning curve. After that, avoiding the penguins and trying not to get too low of a trick at the end become a concern. The ghost drives decently on lap 1 and 2, mainly getting good zippers and taking pretty standard lines for the rest, but his lap 3 is very imperfect, having a poor zipper, but he does back this up by getting low trick on lap 1 and 3. At number 16 we have Melting Magma Melee. The staff ghost is a 253.787 by Russo X, which is 11 seconds off the BKT. Yes, I know. 11 seconds is a hell of a lot of time, especially for a ghost in my top 20, but this may be the hardest track in the game. Nailing all of the strats here such as the snow cut and turn skip while not hitting any walls or falling off is very difficult, and that's the hardest part of this ghost, setting a time. So much can go wrong every lap which can cost you your entire run, and playing it safe may cause you to not be fast enough to beat it. Thankfully, this ghost doesn't do the turn skip properly, and if you're insane enough, you could even try the trueless turn skip for some extra time gain. At number 15 we have Big Nature City. The staff goes to the 236.560 by Gnome, which is 4.9 seconds off the BKT. This trick is kind of awkward to play, especially the second half where the road gets quite bumpy. 
The ghost is also very fast, especially it starts lap 1 and ends lap 2, which is especially annoying due to the red car pace slot, which can force you to be tied with no one going into the last section lap 2. Thankfully, this ghost doesn't get any chains, so getting those luck wheelies can save a bunch of time over the ghost. With that being said though, this ghost is still very fast and one of the most underrated ghosts in the game. At number 14 we have GCN Wario Coliseum. The staff ghost is a 231.972 by soon, which is 3.3 seconds off the BKT. Although this track may look pretty simple, it's surprisingly difficult with a lot of weird turns, an inconsistent wheelie strat, and difficult low trick. It's also hard to stick nose dives on this track, meaning it's hard to take turns tight. Soon drives this very well, especially considering he's on flame and makes no noticeable mistakes. He does lose time in the obvious spots such as the spiral and some other turns, but despite this, it's a very tough ghost that requires you to be quite fast to beat. At number 13 we have Dragon Burial Grounds. The staff ghost is a 220.010 by Dacia, which is 3.5 seconds off the BKT. Although this track is very tough, it is in my opinion an absolute joy to play, and that's probably why I didn't have too much trouble with this ghost personally, but similar to Sadex, I feel I must give this ghost credit that it deserves. There are a bunch of strats on this track, all of which require some kind of learning, and the Shroomless Rail specifically can heartbreakingly end many runs. Dacia drives very well here, impressively sticking every nose dive landing and nailing all of the tech. So while this ghost is certainly very difficult, I don't think it is, or ever was, the hardest ghost in the game. At number 12 we have Dream World Cloudway. The staff ghost is a 255.604 by Russo X, which is 5.3 seconds off the BKT. For starters, this track has 6 low tricks per lap, and getting them all is almost essential to beating this ghost. The ghost overall drives very well for the most of the run, and keeping up can be difficult at first, especially with all of the tech this track throws at you. Thankfully however, Russo loses a lot of time towards the end of lap 3, with a bad stream cut, and even tricks off the last round lap 3. At number 11 we have Sahara Hideout. The staff ghost is a 228.681 by Jasper, which is 4 seconds off the BKT. This ghost is very fast, does all necessary strats, has a fast gap and sand cut, and makes no major mistakes. However, the track is extremely fun, which makes TTing this track a very non-tilting experience. For me at least, this can make the ghost seem easier than it is, but outspeeding Jasper here is a task which will take many quite a while to do. Now we reach the top 10 of this list, and kicking us off is my Master Sanctuary. The staff ghost is a 239.797 by Jasper, which is 3.2 seconds off the big AT. Never before have I seen a pace lock determine how a track plays out as much as my Master Sanctuary does. At the start of the track there is a rail cut which saves almost a second, but on lap 3, the staff ghost is just barely slow enough to where he can make it under the fire wheel in front of the cut. This means that if you are up to a second faster than the ghost going into the cut lap 3, then the fire wheel will become an issue, and you will either have to go around it in the best case and break even with the ghost, or it will mean the end of your run. So you're left with two options slow down to staff ghost pace, or be absurdly fast to the point where you can beat the pace lock. For most, being on staff ghost pace is the easiest option, until you realise the gap cut lap 3. Yes, on staff ghost pace, you will have to go in between the fire pillars. Insanity. If it weren't for these pace locks, this ghost would be about 25 spots lower on the list. Before you call me insane, allow me to explain myself, because at number 9 we have GBA Cheeseland. The staff goes to the 214.374 by Swampy, which is 4.8 seconds off the BKT. This ghost is objectively not in the top 10 of any staff ghost list, but when I was beating this ghost, there was no no magic wizard strat, and this ghost tilted me so much that I am deciding to completely ignore its existence. So, in my mind, this ghost is only 2.8 seconds off Silas Flame BKT. With that being said, this ghost is incredibly fast, and nails all 21 low tricks. Yes, 21. Missing any one of these low tricks yourself can lose up to around 0.5, not to mention the annoying blind cut. However, all of my grievances towards this track are now irrelevant due to the Magistrat, so go and have fun getting a free ghost out of this one. At number 8 we have Rainbow Road. The staff ghost is a 232.375 by Ando, which is 7.7 .7 seconds off the BKT. Time for more CT main bias. This track is very difficult to drive fast and full of tough and inconsistent strats, such as the turn skip and zipper turn. Doing both of these fast all the while avoiding wheel locks and slip just for 3 laps straight is quite the task. The expert goes to use one of the worst vehicles in the game, but manages to gain a lot of time due to the cart shortcut. Cart and RT have made alike made a trickle too much of this ghost, but for me it was a very difficult challenge which I managed to conquer by less than one frame of time. At number 7 we have Pipe Underworld. The staff ghost is a 310.310 by Mega, which is 4.5 seconds off the PKT. 
This is probably the most technical track in the game, as there is a strat around every turn. The moon jump, pipe skip, and that goddamn low trick and weird last turn on lap 1 are all tough strats which take some time to learn, which is the hardest part about beating this ghost, learning the track. Mega drives pretty well here with a few mistakes, his main time loss being missing the moon jump lap 1, which is more than made up for by having a very strong lap 2. This is where the ghosts become very hard to rank, but at number 6 we have Fungal Jungle. The staff goes to 203.365 by counters, which is 2 seconds off the BKT. Being only 2 seconds off the BKT on a very lines heavy track while the ghost is using DK is enough to prove that counters goes all out on this one. I would go as far to say that this is the best driven ghost in the game. There are 4 low tricks per lap in this one, which vary in difficulty, but by far the most important one is the last one, which can determine the quality of the entire last turn. The shroom cut is also a nuisance, as hitting the correct part of the mushroom can be tough to do consistently. The only saving grace is that Countess uses Donkey Kong. If it weren't for that, then this ghost would be damn near impossible. At number 5 we have DS Shroom Ridge. The staff ghost is a 156.525 by Emil, which is 2.4 seconds off the BKT. Very similar story to Fungal in the sense that this is an incredibly driven ghost on a suboptimal combo. The difference is that this track is Minview Highway on crack. The absurd amount of cars makes it very difficult to drive this track fast, especially under pressure. To deal with this, I highly recommend using a 2-1-0 stream strap, as it avoids most awkward car paces, aside from the 3 cars at the start of lap 2, which is just inevitable. Even with all the insanity going on, this is one of the most fun and exhilarating tracks to play in the game, which prevents this incredibly fast staff ghost from being too frustrating. At number 4 we have Honeybee Hideout. The staff goes to the 243.751 by Z-Cube, which is 3.5 seconds off the BKT. To quote directly from the description of my Gold Star video, this track is very difficult to DT. The branches are awkward, the landings are unforgiving, and the shroom cut is frustratingly technical. The main difficulty I found, especially towards the end of my attempts, was keeping a high standard of speed throughout the entire run, as there is so much that can go wrong from one tiny mistake. Yeah, that about sums it up. At number 3 we have N64 Bowser's Castle. The staff goes as a 234.577 by Russo X, which is 3.9 seconds off the BKT. This is definitely the hardest RT staff ghost and it really shows, being less than 4 seconds off one of the most optimised world records. Russo drives very well here, utilising the Mac bike strip to have a very clean shroom, spiral and rail all 3 laps. The hardest part about this track is definitely the superman and shroom, as you have to be setting up for it in the thump room as a bad turn onto the bridge leads to a bad alignment, which leads to a bad superman and a bad shroom. Despite what many say, I would definitely recommend using Flame for this ghost, as while it might make a few strats harder, it allows more leniency in your lines. All in all, the staff ghost is incredible and took me the longest to beat out of any other ghost in the game. At number 2 we have Woohoo Island. The staff ghost is a 137.797, which is 2.2 seconds off the BKT. 2.2 seconds is already a very small amount away from the ghost, but when you consider that very few people are going to be beating this ghost on auto or by doing the clip shortcut, then that means that the staff ghost is really only 1.1 seconds off Casey's 136.6. Not only that, but this ghost forces you on spit, which many aren't nearly as comfortable with as they are with Flame or Mac. This track also has many precise alignments and opportunities for chain wheelies, which really throw every player into the deep end. Everything considered, this is a stupidly fast ghost, which could take players countless of hours to beat. And at number 1, what is in my opinion the most difficult staff ghost in all of CTGP? None other than Castle of Darkness. The staff ghost is a 259.452 by Pascal, which is 5.8 seconds off the BKT. From the POV of someone who can't do Terracy Strat, this ghost is absolutely ridiculous, and completely eclipses every other staff ghost in the game. It combines an absurdly difficult track with an incredibly fast staff ghost to make for one of the most painful and insane challenges this game has to offer. For starters, there's the boost panel ropes. These have a massive learning curve and maintaining traction on them can be a very, very tough. I recommend staying in a drifter or wheelie as much as possible. Then there's the beam low trick which can send you in a trillion word directions. The alignment into the stream can be a surprising run killer and to top it all off there is a wall bounce which, while consistent once learned, can end a lap 3 run right as you can taste victory. Pascal pops off in this ghost, nailing all the tech and having an especially incredible lap 1 and no noticeable mistakes for the duration of the entire run, even leaving very little room for funky time gain due to the amount of boost panels and the fact he uses Bowser. Taking everything into account, this is without a doubt the hardest ghost in the game, and while those who can do streamless may not struggle nearly as much, the rest of us folk have to deal with this BS if we want to achieve the 250 dream. 
and that concludes my list. Did you agree? Probably not. Let me know your own wrong opinions in the comments below. This video took a while to make, so sharing it around would be greatly appreciated. I'm not too sure when I'll be next uploading to the channel, as I'm currently on an MKOE hiatus. The East Coast has really took a lot out of me. But feel free to follow my Twitch in case I start a spontaneous time trial stream though. I'll leave a link in the description. But until the next time I produce some lousy content, thank you all for watching.